Hi gang, the Imperium of Man is the largest and most prominent faction in the universe of Warhammer 40,000. Composed of tons of sub-factions, organizations, military wings and allies, but who's in charge? How does this all work? Who has ultimate authority, if anyone? Well, in this video, we're gonna find out. Right, so that was a lie. We're not going to find that out. The Imperium is the biggest interstellar empire in the galaxy, composed of a million inhabited worlds spread thinly across the stars, kept in contact only by the unreliable tides of the warp and attempting to keep itself together against the constant tide of alien invasions, demonic incursions and betrayal from within. And keeping all this running is complicated, involving tithing departments, law enforcement agencies, ancient pacts, multiple military and paramilitary forces, and a colossal space bureaucracy that attempts to oversee it all. As the 8th edition rulebook stated, the many organizations of the Imperium are so complex and Byzantine that to detail even a fraction of them would take the life's work of a dedicated house of scriveners. And even Games Workshop don't have that long. Many organizational structures of the Imperium have been published over the years, varying in their complexity, but departments have a habit of moving around a bit or being left out, and they kind of just gave up around 8th edition with the return of Gilliman because that just made things more complex. But don't worry, I've been scrivening for a standard Imperial weekend and mushed all of the previous structures I could find into this, which I think is reasonably accurate. So let's go through it and try to explain how the organization of the Imperium actually works. Let's start at the top. In theory, the highest authority in the Imperium is the God Emperor of Mankind, ruling his empire from the Golden Throne on Terra. Of course, that's not as simple as it sounds. The Emperor of Mankind has been catatonic and largely unresponsive for the last 10,000 years since his fateful duel with Horus at the end of the Horus Heresy, and very few people are allowed in for a chat. The Emperor of Mankind, though definitely the figurehead for the Imperium, only really affects his empire through occasional questionable miracles, through extremely rare interaction with his bodyguards, the Adeptus Custodes, and through the even rarer person who is actually allowed into his presence, the last being Robute Gilliman. So while the Emperor is technically in charge, the real supreme power in the Imperium rests in the hands of the Senatorum Imperialis and its ruling council, the High Lords of Terror. The High Lords of Terror are a council of twelve, each of which is the head of one of the Imperium's many organizations, which exact offices get a place on the council changes over the years, dependent on the politicking of its members and the relative prominence of each of the institutions at that time. Some seats are more or less permanent, the Master of the Administratum and the Ecclesiarch, the Fabricator General of the Adeptus Mechanicus are all so important that they're pretty much guaranteed a place, but others rotate in and out depending on the requirements of the time. For example, the Captain General of the Adeptus Custodes recently retook a seat on the council. The decisions made by these High Lords are weighty ones. The response to large-scale alien threats, the decision to appoint war masters and devote the resources of whole sectors to new crusades, and in order to enact these decrees, the Senatorum itself is an organization thousands strong, composed of high-ranking officials, nobles, and anyone else with the power and influence to be involved, all working to make those policy decisions a reality and advance their own schemes too. In in theory, the High Lords are the ultimate authority ruling in the name of the Emperor, but as will become common in this, other people also have the ultimate authority. The most obvious here is the Primarch, Robute Gilliman, who holds the dual ranks of Imperial Regent and Lord Commander of the Imperium. Imperial Regent is a civilian title that designates someone as the representative and proxy of the Emperor in all matters of state. The original holder of the title, way back when the Emperor was up and about, was Malkador the Sigilite, who formed the original Council of Terror, the predecessor to all this, to administer this new Imperium. Lord Commander of the Imperium is a another old title, granting Gilliman supreme authority over the military forces of the Imperium and allowing him to serve as the chief
chair of the Senatorum Imperialis. The original holder of that office during the heresy was Rogal Dorn, who commanded the defence of Terra, but in the aftermath this office went to Robert Gilliman, and he became synonymous with the role. In the aftermath of him being wounded and put in stasis, the next few Lord Commanders of the Imperium, usually prominent Space Marines, were actually known ceremonially as the Lord Gilliman. 10,000 years later, these dual titles mean that Robute Gilliman has supreme authority over both civilian and military affairs, even though so do the High Lords, of which he is occasionally chairman. Thankfully, this doesn't cause as much friction as you'd imagine, since most of the Primarch's efforts go into the organisation of his Indomitus Crusade, rather than the day-to-day -day running of the Imperium. The Primarch maintains a Council of Representatives of the High Lords, the Council Ex Terra, who advise him whenever he's out on campaign. But wait, there's a third organisation at this level, just to keep things simple, and that's the Inquisition. Originally formed by Malkador the Sigilite after the Horus Heresy, the Inquisition was designed to seek out the various enemies of the Imperium, Imperium and operates outside the rest of the power structure, like a secret police force. Fully invested Inquisitors have, in theory, ultimate authority to requisition whatever they need in their investigations, though the obvious potential for abuse of this is largely held in check by the fact that all Inquisitors have this power and they all disagree on what's an acceptable use of it. In practice, Inquisitors have as much power as they can wield without causing too much of a stir for other other Inquisitors, and their own conclaves and internal structures police their own ranks. Are the Inquisition above or below the High Lords or Gilliman? Difficult to say. In practice, no. The Inquisitorial representative is frequently one of the High Lords. But then Inquisitorial investigations have been launched into individual High Lords in the past. It all depends. Beyond these three holders of supreme authority, we get into the ranks of the Adepta, a term that technically means priesthood in the sense that all of them are serving the will of the God Emperor. The three main divisions here are the Adeptus Terra, the priesthood of Earth, comprised of all the governmental and bureaucratic institutions of the Imperium, the Adeptus Mechanicus, the priesthood of Mars, who control the Imperium's technology, and the Adeptus Ministorum, the priesthood of, um, priests, who run the state religion, the Imperial Cult. Let's start there. The Adeptus Ministorum, also known as the Ecclesiarchy, is the organisation that control the state religion of the Imperium, the worship of the God Emperor of Mankind, known as the Imperial Creed or the Imperial Cult. They were never a part of the original power structure of the Imperium, but grew in status in the millennia following the Horus Heresy, until eventually they were formalised as one of the Adepta in the 32nd millennium. Since then, they've grown into one of the most powerful and prominent arms of Imperial authority, with a presence on almost every Imperial world and in every other Imperial organisation, from the armies of low-level preachers and confessors that minister to the population of the Imperium, to building and maintaining churches and cathedrals, and the resultant church taxes that come with them, to supplying religious officers to other Imperial branches, even military ones. In the 41st millennium, the Adeptus Ministorum are completely enmeshed throughout the Imperial power structure, and their leader, the Ecclesiarch, is one of the High Lords of Terra. They are, of course, like everything, split down into a dizzying array of dioceses, wards and bishoprics, and the Ecclesiarchy even maintain their own cardinal worlds under full church control, but there are three main sub-organisations that are big enough to merit inclusion on this list. The Missionaria Galaxia deal with the spreading of the Imperium's faith to those newly discovered worlds who are as yet unaware of it. Missionaries operate their own craft, but they're more commonly found on military vessels or within the entourages of rogue traders, should any ancient lost outcrops of humanity be rediscovered. Missionaries might preach openly to the people, or they might enmesh themselves in non-imperial cultures for decades, slowly merging the existing beliefs of the culture with the worship of their god emperor. The Scholar Progenium is essentially a state orphanage run by the Ministorum that take in and train the orphans 
hands of other Imperial servants for a life in the Adepta. Scholar are spread all over the Imperium, and their graduates serve in all branches of the Imperial hierarchy. They're particularly useful as recruiting bases for the Administratum, the Commissariat, and the Militarum Tempestus companies of the Imperial Guard, and the Ministorum's own private military force, the Adepta Sororitas. And they're up next. The Adepta Sororitas, also known as the Sisters of Battle, are the militant arm of the Adeptus Ministorum, something that's pretty common amongst the various branches of the Imperial machine. The Sororitas actually exist as a loophole. The Ecclesiarchy were once banned from holding men under arms after one too many attempts at a coup, and so the Adeptus Sororitas are an all-female organisation as a way of getting round that. The organisation is split down further into a number of orders, all nominally based on either Terra or the cardinal world of Ophelia VII, but in reality spread across the galaxy. There are many non-military orders. The Order Dialogus specialise in translation, negotiation and battlefield rhetoric. The Order Famulus manipulate the bloodlines of noble families, making sure favourable heirs come to power. The Order Hospitaller provide battlefield medics, and there are loads more, but the most prominent are the military orders, who provide armies of zealous warriors, equipped with some of the most expensive arms and armour in the Imperium. The Ecclesiarchy is very rich. The orders militant of the Adeptus Sororitas fight in Imperial armies, conduct wars of faith on behalf of the Ministorum, and also serve as the chamber militant of the Inquisition's Ordo Hereticus, and they're represented in the Senatorum by the Abbess Sanctorum, currently Morven Val. On the other side of the big three, we have the Adeptus Mechanicus, the organisation responsible for the regulation and development of technology throughout the Imperium. Like the Ministorum, the Mechanicus are present at every level of Imperial life, from the very highest, the Fabricator General of Mars is another practically permanent High Lord, to the very lowest, maintaining simple fighting vehicles or factory machinery. However, unlike the Ecclesiarchy, the Mechanicum is more of an ally to the Imperium rather than part of it. Mars and the string of forge worlds that owe it fealty existed as its own galaxy-spanning empire since before the Age of Strife, and so when they joined with the Imperium from Terra, it was very much as a separate empire allied to the one of the Emperor, something tolerated in very few other places. The Mechanicum are also a priesthood, centred around the worship of their machine god, and who see the Emperor as its omnissiah, the machine god's earthly avatar. Avatar. And as a religious organisation, they're exactly as conservative as the Ministorum. To the tech priests, all scientific knowledge already exists, discovered by humans in the age of technology, and so while rediscovering the secrets of the ancients is a holy task, attempting to innovate or come up with new designs is rank heresy. The organisation that is the Adeptus Mechanicus has a huge number of sub-layers and cults within it, but largely every ranking Magos and Tech Priest is the master of his own forge, and has ultimate power over the lives of the Servitors and Menials within it, and over its military forces. The rest of the Imperium treats with these forges and forge worlds through an elaborate series of ancient tithes and debts, which see Tech Priests serving in the Astra Militarum, or tending the engines of Imperial Navy ships, or teaching the tech marines of the Adeptus Astartes, but wherever they serve, they're always seen as a breed apart, outsiders spread throughout the Imperium. One sub-organisation that is worth picking out though is the Titan Legions. Titans are the largest and most powerful ground fighting vehicles utilised by the Imperium and worshipped by the Mechanicum as god engines. While technically part of the Mechanicum structure and often based on notable forge worlds, their princeps senioris therefore have considerably more leeway and independence than most servants of the Mechanicum and a level of control over where their forces are committed, operating as their own semi-autonomous armies. Okay, that's the two big religious organisations out of the way. Let's move on to what is by far the biggest sector of the priesthood, the Adeptus Terra. But the Adeptus Terra is more of an umbrella organisation. It's the collective name for the vast array of departments and organisations that actually run the Imperium, covering everything from the payment of taxes to the organisation of the military, and it has no single representative on the High Lords. Instead, many of its sub-factions are so large that they have their own High Lords, military forces, and, of course, 
supreme authority over their own specific area. The shiniest of the Adepta here, and one we've already mentioned, are the Adeptus Custodes. Originally known as the Legio Custodes, the Custodians are the bodyguard of the Emperor himself, and one of the most elite and powerful military forces in the Imperium. After the Emperor was confined to the Golden Throne in the aftermath of the Horus Heresy, they were renamed the Adeptus Custodes to fit them into the Imperial power structure, but in reality, they were also one of those organizations that consider themselves slightly apart from the Imperium. They were concerned only with the life of the Emperor and stood apart from the politics and the administration of the Empire he ruled. An edict of restraint was even passed shortly after the heresy that saw them confined to the Imperial Palace on Terra for the next ten millennia, unable and, to be fair, unwilling to operate in force outside that, until it was eventually dissolved with the return of Gilliman. The Custodes now act against any threat they see that could eventually affect the Emperor, which gives them a pretty wide jurisdiction across the galaxy, and they're often seen acting in force on their own missions or as part of the Indomitus Crusade. Though their leader, the Captain General, is able to take a place on the High Lords, it's relatively rare. The current Captain General, Trajan Valoris, only retook his seat shortly before the fall of Cadia. The Adeptus Astra Telepathica is one of the more sinister organizations in the Adeptus Terra. Operating from the Obsidian Keep on Terra, the Telepathica are responsible for the collection, control, and tutelage of psychers within the Imperium. Their recruitment arm, the League of Black Ships, patrol the galaxy collecting rogue psychers from the worlds of the Imperium, who are bound by law to hunt them down, and then return them to Terra, where the Telepathica's recruitment arm, the Scholastica Psychana, weed them, rate their strength, and train them for roles in Imperial life. The most prominent of these are astropaths, psychers who have undergone the soul-binding ritual with the Emperor himself, and can thus use their powers of astro-telepathy to communicate across vast distances, the chief way in which the Imperium holds itself together. To aid in this, the Adeptus Astra Telepathica maintains two militant forces. Their Departmento Investigatus are the Sisters of Silence, an all female organization of psychic blanks who are charged with hunting down psychers across the Imperium. Their affiliation with the Telepathica, though, is largely symbolic. In reality, they're an independent military force, answering originally to the Emperor and, in the 41st millennium, to Gilliman, who reinstated them after a long absence. They can still be found crewing the black ships, but much more common are the Black Sentinels, the Telepathica's real military arm, recruited from particularly psychically inert warriors and who guard Telepathica facilities, crew black ships, and stand watch over the Astropath for any sign of warp corruption. The master of the Adeptus is a common holder of a seat on the High Lords. As well as the Astropaths, the Telepathica have links to other Imperial organizations, like training battle psychers for the Astra Militarum, but on Terra, many of their recruits find their way into the Adeptus Astronomicon. The Astronomicon is a giant psychic beacon, guided by the Emperor, that serves as a pole star for the navigators of the Imperial fleet, without which interstellar travel would break down totally. Based in the Forbidden Fortress on Terra, the Adeptus Astronomicon are responsible for the maintenance and fueling of the beacon. Their initiates are inducted into a monastic order, prepared for years in their role, until, eventually, they take up their positions in the great choir of the Astronomicon their psychic energies leached away over a few months to power the beacon. A hundred die a day, but the role is so important that the master of the Astronomicon is another frequent High Lord of Terror. The Adeptus Arbites are the keepers of the Lex Imperia, the Imperial Law, and operate throughout the Imperium as essentially the soldiers and enforcers of the Adeptus Terror. Arbites garrisons and precinct houses exist on almost every world of the Imperium, keeping watch over the planetary governors as much as the citizenry. It's important to note that the Arbites are only concerned with Imperial law, not local law. Petty gang fights and murders are beneath their notice, but any criminal activity that impedes the operation of the Imperium and its adepta, anything that might risk Imperial obligations like the delivery of the tithe, and anything that risks outright heresy, 
is their business, and they come down on lawbreakers with brutal force. The Arbites are exceptionally well equipped, their precinct houses are imposing fortresses, and they're often the last imperial representatives to hold out in the case of rebellion or secession. Internally, they're split into the arbitrators, the paramilitary wing, and the judges, the legal arm, who debate and apply the Book of Judgment, and their leader, the Grand Provost Marshal, is frequently a member of the High Lords. But the largest and most complex part of the Adeptus Terra is the Adeptus Administratum, an organisation of billions of scribes, notaries and clerks that work to keep the Imperium running. In fact, the Administratum present merely on Terra are estimated to number 10 billion, and its chief concerns are represented by its two biggest departments, the Departmento Exacta and the Departmento Munitorum. The Departmento Exacta is responsible for the raising, measuring and collecting of the Imperial Tithe, the thing that makes this whole system run. Due to the size and scale of the galaxy, Imperial worlds are largely self-governing, each with their own local economy, but each world owes a tithe to the Imperium at large. This tithe could be delivered in many forms, and it's not uncommon for tithes to be linked to other systems. For example, an industrial world, in addition to whatever local economy it supports, might be tithed to supply X million las guns to the Imperium every year. And in order to do that, a nearby mining system might be tithed to provide the raw materials, and another system to provide enough food for that workforce. This system of tithes enables the Imperium's armies and manufactorums to function, and the logistics of organising it are bewilderingly complex, involving planetary censuses, productivity estimates, and galactic transport rotors, as well as the involvement of other Imperial departments. Those lasgun manufactorums might operate under license from the Mechanicus, for example. This ultimately all comes down to the Departmento Exacta and its subdivisions, who constantly adjust the tithe grades of Imperial worlds in response to new threats, newly launched crusades, and shortfalls from lost planets. An adjustment that might see worlds plunged into squalor or suffused with an influx of labour, depending on the requirements. And of course, one of the most frequently tithed resources is humans themselves. The Departmento Munitorum are the Department of the Administratum responsible for raising and maintaining the Imperium's standing army, the Astra Militarum or Imperial Guard. Just like any other resource, a tithe might be demanded from a planet in the form of armed soldiery, either raised specifically for the occasion or drawn from the planet's existing defence forces. In fact, for some planets, armed regiments are the main form of tithe provided. From that point, the men and women serving in them are under the complete control of the Departmento Munitorum, the Administratum being one of the only organisations able to do such a massive task. Though the Astra Militarum has its own complex command structure, it's the Munitorum who provide their supplies and armaments, arrange their assignments and transport, who promote its generals and officers, and who even have their own internal department, the Officio Prefectum, who assign the commissars who make sure those assignments are being followed. To all intents and purposes, the Departmento Munitorum is the Imperial Guard. The only decision they don't take is where those regiments will fight. In the Senatorum, the Astra Militarum is represented by the Lord Commander Militant of the Imperial Guard, frequently one of the High Lords, and occasionally by the Lord Commander of the Segmentum Solar, the current holder of that role being Arcadian Leontus. And in a similar way, the Administratum is also in overall organisational control of the Imperial fleet. The fleet is split down into three component sections, each with their own focus. The civil fleet comprises all the privately owned ships operated by private cartels and noble families across the Imperium, their routes and licensing regulated by the Administratum, but that's relatively small. The vast majority of Imperial spacecraft are part of the merchant fleet, another organisation with origins that predate the Imperium. Around 90% of interstellar craft in the galaxy are merchant vessels, either conducting their own business along ancient trade routes or involved in the collection and shipping of the Imperial Tithe. 
This organization is so large, it has its own security forces, the Prices Mercatura, and its own representative to the Senatorum, the Speaker for the Chartist Captains, a position considered so important to the continued operation of the Imperium that its holder has often held position as a High Lord of Terror. Finally, the Imperial Navy is a massive armed force, split down into segmenta, then sector, then subsector fleets, each with its own ancient internal ranking system, but its provision, crewing, promotion, and maintenance is organised and fulfilled by the Administratum in the same way as they do for the Imperial Guard, with a similar fleet commissariat existing to make sure its captains and admirals are doing their job. The Lord High Admiral of the Imperial Navy is also frequently a member of the High Lords of Terror. And then finally, under the nominal bracket of the fleet is the Navis Nobilite. The Navigators are one of those organisations that are technically under the control of the Administratum, but in reality are their own closed organisation. The stable mutation that allows a navigator to guide a ship through the warp predates the Imperium by thousands of years, and the resulting navigator houses tend to keep themselves to themselves, protected in their walled compounds by their own private security, isolated from the regular crew while on ship, and generally shunned by much of humanity despite how necessary they are. The leader of the Navigators is the Paternova, a position of massive power, but due to their strange outsider status, the Paternova of the Navis Nobility sends an envoy to represent the Navigators on the Council of High Lords. Finally, in this list of terrifying Imperial military forces controlled by a bunch of scribes, we have the Officio Assassinorum, responsible for the training and deployment of Imperial Assassins, and technically part of the Administratum, even though their leader, the Grand Master of Assassins, almost always has a position as a High Lord. The Assassins are further broken down into various temples that have sector and subsector bases across the galaxy. With these three forces alone, the Administratum is functionally the most powerful military department in the Imperium, and the Master of the Administratum is not only always a High Lord, but frequently was the Chair of the Council of High Lords before the return of Gilliman. In fact, given Given how powerful its many sub-departments are, the Administratum could easily fill over half the positions within the High Lords on its own. And they don't stop there, because the Imperial bureaucracy is also responsible for the tracking and regulation of an even wider network of semi-autonomous organisations across the Imperium. The most obvious of these are the Imperial Commanders, or Planetary Governors, who rule the various planets of the Imperium. As I mentioned before, the planets of the Imperium are spread very thin across an unimaginably vast distance, which means that to all intents and purposes, central control is impossible. In practice, each planet is a totally independent state that all but rules itself under the control of a single planetary governor. The actual government of that planet could be anything, a democracy, a ruling council of officials, but as far as the Imperium is concerned, someone has to be in charge, and so hereditary monarchies are exceptionally common. The planetary governor is responsible for the delivery of the tithe, the raising of a planetary defence force to defend the planet, and the adherence to the big, important laws of the Imperium, clamping down on heresy, controlling psychers. But other than that, they're left to run their domain as they wish. Their common citizens might be workers, traders, and voters, or they might be oppressed peasants, or feral tribesmen, or indentured servants. The representatives of the Adeptus that are common to every planet, the Arbites, Administratum, the Ministorum Priests, and Mechanicum Tech Priests, might be seen as distrusted off-worlders, or might be deeply enmeshed in the local culture, the sort of prestigious position that local families hope their children go into. Or they might even be wholly confined to an orbiting moon or something. As long as the tithe keeps coming, the Imperium as a whole doesn't care. The Administratum is also responsible for the regulation of rogue traders. Rogue traders are explorers, privateers, and merchants who are in possession of a warrant of trade from the Imperium, allowing them to journey wherever they wish, and even conduct trade beyond the boundaries of the Imperium itself with Xenos or with undiscovered human cultures. These warrants are often granted by the Administratum, but some might be granted by other High Lords, and some date back to the days of the Emperor himself. 
himself. Many of these rogue trader families are thousands of years old, and the rogue traders in question control vast autonomous fleets of ships, whole armies supplied to them by ancient treaty, their warrants allowing them to ignore most imperial laws and push forward the boundaries of known space however they see fit. And finally, the Administratum is also responsible for the tracking, recording, and entreating of aid from the most independent arms of the Imperium, the Space Marine chapters and the Night Worlds. I know, right? This far through the video, we finally get to Space Marines. Space Marine chapters are all but autonomous from Imperial control. Their mandate comes from the Emperor himself and their Primarch founders, and they tend to hold that no one in the Imperium can gainsay that. Their chapter homeworlds are exempt from Administratum control, or ministorum influence, and they uphold their duties out of ancient oaths and loyalty, supported by ancient packs with local forge worlds. They watch over their domains and the local areas of the galaxy on their own terms, and though many parts of the Imperium might entreat them for aid, it's up to each chapter master where their forces actually fight. The Space Marine chapters are definitely Imperial, but they're all but exempt from control and have little place within its government structures. Nevertheless, there are still some links. Each chapter is still required to send a tithe of its gene seed back to Terra regularly to check for stability. New chapters are founded and given their duties by the High Lords, and there are some chapters that have even closer links to the greater Imperial structure. The Grey Knights, based on Titan, have an ancient role as the chamber militant of the Inquisition's Ordo Malleus, tasked to protect the Imperium from demonic threat. And the Death Watch are a galaxy-spanning organization of indentured space marines from multiple chapters that form the chamber militant of the Ordo Xenos. Other chapters over the years have forged particularly strong ties with other Imperial organizations, like the Minotaurs, who have a close relationship with the Administratum, or the Red Hunters, who frequently answer the call of the Inquisition. Similar to all those are the Night Worlds. Descendants of the very earliest human colonists, the Night Worlds are feudal hierarchies that adhere to ancient traditions and hold themselves separate from the Imperium at large, ruling as independent domains allied to the overall imperial structure through ancient oaths. Some Night Worlds, upon their rediscovery, were tempted to ally with the Adeptus Mechanicus in return for technical support, and as such become vassal states of nearby Forge Worlds, but the majority hold a similar status to those of the Space Marine chapters. Imperial but also apart. All of these structures and the relationships between them are frequently thousands of years old, but it's worth saying that new structures have been created over time, particularly with the recent launch of the Indomitus Crusade. For example, the Officio Logisticarum was created by Robute Gilliman in order to oversee and supply the needs of this massive endeavour, created from the best of the Administratum and the Departmento Munitorum, and organised through a system of hub fortresses left in the wake of the Crusades fleets, ensuring that they have supply and the Logos Historica Veritae was set up when Gilliman realised that the existing histories of the past 10,000 years had been hopelessly corrupted by secrecy and revisionism, consisting of a core of scribes and, by the Imperium standards, radical free thinkers, the role of the agency is to record the history of the Indomitus Crusade itself, and also to piece together the fractured history of the 10,000 years the Primarch missed. As you might have noticed, many of these institutions claim supreme executive power over some aspect of Imperial life, which makes it extremely difficult to just state who's in charge. Is an Inquisitor more powerful than a Space Marine chapter master? Well, technically, maybe, but can that Inquisitor actually amass enough military power to do anything about it? If he does, will other Inquisitors back him or consider him a traitor for pulling forces away from more important matters? In reality, both could claim to have ultimate legal authority. Life within the government of the Imperium is therefore rife with internal politics and backstabbing, and many dilemmas facing the Imperium become power struggles as different departments attempt to exert their own authority, often through the backing of their own militaries. Sometimes these disagreements are due to legitimate competing interests, but they can just as often be the result of greed, corruption, the normal sort and the chaos sort, struggles for personal 
power or the obsessions of high-ranking adepts. During the Siege of Vrax, a Departmento Munitorum armory world in the Scarus sector, the combined forces of the Adeptus Ministorum and the Ordo Hereticus repeatedly tried to seize control of the war to protect the sacred relics housed in a basilica on the surface, causing massive problems for the siege's commanders. When it came time for a change of command, the master of the administratum had to all but threaten that if the ministorum inserted their own candidate as a commander, the war's reinforcement status would be downgraded to nil and no more troops would be committed. The Badab War was essentially started by a legal dispute between departments, when the chapter master of the Astral Clause invoked the ancient duty to protect the Imperium by requisitioning the industrial output of the sector, withholding the tithe which was then contested by the administratum of a nearby sector who needed that industrial output to reach their tithe. Both sides brought in Space Marine forces until 20 chapters were involved, the Badab sector all but destroyed, and the Red Corsair's Chaos Warband created from the aftermath. And on Terra, when Gilliman returned, reformed the High Lords, and then departed for the Indomitus Crusade, a number of recently deposed ones, dissatisfied with their now reduced status, attempted a coup, deploying the Minotaur's chapter to Terra in an attempt to wrest back control from the Primarch, eventually stopped by the Custodes, Sisters of Silence, Imperial Fists, and Officio Assassinorum. The organisation of the Imperium is famously, deliberately dysfunctional. It's part of the grand satire of 40k, and the reason why so many of the most interesting stories involve the Imperium fighting mostly itself, just like in real life, it's a colossal edifice that has lost sight of why it actually exists. The Imperium is way too big to function effectively, but it's built on so many layers of tradition, conservatism, and jealousy, based on such a cutthroat and uncaring culture that it stubbornly resists reform, even when frequently it's its own worst enemy. Thanks for watching. And if you'd like to hear more about the lore of 40k, there should be a video just popping up to the right. And if you'd like to support the channel, click all the usual buttons, or there's a link to Patreon in the thing below. If you join up, you can get early access to videos, participate in the Tale of Four Gamers, and occasionally vote on the next book for our book club. See ya!